Hi, welcome to another episode of Great Conversations with me, Nicola O'Donoghue. I'm so grateful that you are here. This podcast is for anyone who wants to lead a happier, healthier, more fulfilling life and is tired of all the snake oil and impractical advice that is out there. I've managed to convince some amazing individuals to share incredibly unfiltered and personal stories about how they are navigating their way through life, relationships, growing up, parenting, and everything in between. My guests share lessons learned and wisdom gained, particularly during tough times or periods of change. We'll be chatting about happiness, balance, fulfillment, success. What do these terms even mean? Is it really possible to achieve them? And if so, how do you do it without ripping up your life and running away? Because let's face it, the reality of life is that there are some responsibilities we can't run away from. We have our bills to pay, we have to feed ourselves, show up for those who need us. And most of us don't want to rip up our lives and start again because our lives aren't that bad. They just could be better. I've lived a life full of highs and lows as I chased success and happiness. My identity was conditional on the external accumulation of titles, things, money and relationships. I was outwardly very successful. I have a law degree from Oxford University. I worked as a corporate lawyer for the biggest firms in London before quitting the legal profession to study for an MBA at Cambridge University. After which I worked as a management consultant before transitioning into global HR roles. I eventually set up my own consulting business, which led me to Africa, North America, and eventually back to the UK. And the pace of my life was really relentless. You know, even after a good night's sleep or a holiday, I didn't feel fully recharged. I was spending far too much time consumed with work, stressed, and looking after everyone else with very little time for myself. I knew I was searching for something that was missing and I kept looking externally to try and find the missing piece that was going to bring me, I guess, a bit of peace. And at the time I was comparing myself to what others were doing and society driven milestones, which I'd used to push myself harder and further. So I didn't feel like a failure or that I was being left behind. And that fear of being left behind It definitely resulted in me getting married. I bought the house of my dreams and it shaped pretty much most of the decisions I made in my thirties. And obviously living life in pursuit of external accumulation eventually caught up with me. I found myself on the edge of burnout, trying to save a struggling business in an abusive marriage, isolated from friends and family because of a global pandemic. I felt lost, alone, stuck and completely overwhelmed. I'd live my life according to the playbook. So why wasn't I feeling happy and successful? Because outwardly, that's how my life looked. And what surprised me was realizing that I wasn't alone in feeling this way. I regularly met people who were struggling with the same things, you know, accepting that life was just a six out of 10. And they were numbing themselves to the dissatisfaction by juggling too much responsibility, believing that they didn't have enough time, money or energy to live the life they truly wanted. And I think like me, many of these individuals felt lonely and stuck and overwhelmed and frustrated. And I couldn't help wondering why people stayed stuck in these unfulfilling relationships and jobs and situations. You know, why is change so hard? What holds people back from making a change and taking a step forward towards more fulfillment and joy and peace? And when I reflect on my own journey, I think the main reason I stayed so long was because I was scared that I wouldn't be able to deal with the consequences of my actions, the fear of the unknown and admitting that I was a failure or that I had failed. Ultimately for me, the amount of pain and frustration that I was living with forced me to change. It was having such a huge impact on my physical health that I just knew that I had to get out. And the last few years have been really tough. Um, In order to get out of my abusive marriage, I had to leave everything behind and literally start again. And the hardest thing about piecing my life back together in the beginning anyway, was actually asking for help. I felt so ashamed and vulnerable. 
it's amazing how your inner critics can tell you such nasty things. Like I truly believe that everyone else was out there living a perfect life and that it was only me who was feeling lost and unhappy and who'd got herself into a terrible situation that she couldn't find a way out of. It was only me who was stuck and drowning on the inside, but couldn't show this to the world. And it just actually wasn't true. Like when I finally shared what was happening with my family and close friends, it was amazing who showed up in my life to be there for me. I also reached out to other people who had experienced something similar and just the relief at realizing that my experience, sadly, actually wasn't unique being seen and listened to and understood and learning from others. I've been able to rebuild my life and do what I'm doing now, really because of the love and support of the communities around me. And the biggest lesson that I've learned is that asking for help is not a sign of weakness, but it's of strength. It took such a huge amount of courage to open up, but doing so has really transformed my relationships, not only with myself, but with the people that I love. And so I guess Great Conversations is an opportunity for people to share wisdom and lived experiences without shame or judgment. I really want to inspire through positive stories and experiences and highlight that we've got more in common than we think. You know, whatever you may be dealing with, there's likely someone else who's going through or has gone through something similar. We have new episodes every other week and you can listen and subscribe to Great Conversations wherever you get your podcasts. And I can't wait. I'm so excited for you to sit back and enjoy some great conversations. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. I'd like to thank the humans that make the Great Conversations podcast possible. My editor, Jovan Stoikowski, Jamie Jenkin, who made the lovely music that you're hearing now, and my guests, for their willingness to share their personal stories. If you haven't already, please rate and follow the podcast. It's a great way to show your support and allows me to keep bringing on extraordinary guests. Sending you so much love. Bye for now.